Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, we are checking out the Umarex Air Bow. This is a hybrid between an air rifle and a bow, only there is no string. It's incredibly high powered. So we're gonna talk about the pros and cons. We're gonna put it to the test, put it through its paces and see whether or not this thing is worth its weight for survivalists and preppers. Let's get to it. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today we're gonna talk about hunting after the grid goes down. Let's get to it. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's just a video shoot. So I often get comments on the channel, Nate, why don't you show any firearms on the channel? Well, if you've been on YouTube for a while, you probably know the reason why it's unfortunately frowned upon. But rest assured, us Canadians are fairly well armed. In fact, we're a lot more well armed than a lot of people think. But I love showing off novelty weapons like specialized crossbows that I've shown on the channel before, like the Cobra Adder or the Twin Strike crossbow that we showed off a few months ago that is a high powered double barrel crossbow, never been done before, amazing weapon. This is very cool. These are starting to become a lot more popular because of the fact that you get all the benefits of a crossbow in a rifle type platform. Now this is the Umarex Airbow. This retails, I believe, between $500 and $700. That's gonna vary with Canadian and US dollars. I've seen this down to 500 Canadian. And I've seen it as high as 800 Canadian. So it just depends on where you get it right now with all the supply chain disruptions and all that. I'm not gonna post links to where you can get it. You can just Google it online. This is not a paid review. So I should explain first what an Airbow is. So. There's a compressed air tank on board here. That's this tube. And it stores enough air to take about 25 to 30 shots. Now, there's a pressure gauge on the bottom here. After you first charge this thing up to full pressure, that's when you're gonna get the fastest shots. This thing peaks out at about 480 feet per second. I was able to get 463 feet per second clocked and that was when the tank wasn't at full. So I don't doubt that you can achieve the manufacturer's stated feet per second. So you can see here, it, it has a pistol grip stock to it. It's a very streamlined finish, nothing fancy. It's got the padded buttstock on the end there. There's a chrome bolt that you use to charge it and you get a four x 32 Axiom scope. And there are some Picatinny rails if you wanna mount some other accessories on there like a quiver or a flashlight or something like that. There is a safety on the trigger. It's a two-step trigger and there is this nozzle. I usually just leave it in there. It sticks in there quite well, but you don't wanna lose this because this is what you use to charge it up. So there's three ways to charge this. You can use the hand pump, which is gonna be very laborious. To fill this tank with the hand pump that Umar excels is gonna take about a thousand pumps, okay? so. That's something though, if you're a prepper survivalist and you're thinking long-term about something like this, you definitely would wanna go with the hand pump just because of the potential for the air compressor to break down. Now you can also use a compressed air and an oxygen tank or you can use a fancy 3600 to 4500 PSI air compressor. Umarek sells their own air compressors, but there are a variety that you can get on Amazon. They're gonna range in price from about 500 to thousand dollars. So it's very important that if you are going to get something like this, that you're mindful of the fact that there are only three ways to charge it. As far as prepping goes, the most reliable one of those is gonna be the hand pump, in spite of the fact that it takes a thousand pumps. Now, if you do the math, you're getting 25 to 30 high powered shots per full charge. If it takes you a thousand pumps to fill it, that means that for every shot you're taking, you're gonna be exhibiting about 30 pumps. Now, if it's the post-apocalypse and you got nothing better to do, a thousand pumps is probably not gonna be a big deal. In fact, I'm sure a lot of people could use the exercise. So how it works, in case you're wondering, is there's a tube at the end and you put these proprietary arrows onto that tube, just like so, and then you charge it with that bolt, then you take your shot. Well, let's first talk about the benefits. So. The benefits of something like this is that it's going to be relatively quiet for the amount of power it outputs. 
So you're able to take anything that a large bore rifle could take with the sound of, I'd say like a 22. It's a bit of a duller sound, so I don't think it's gonna travel as far. In terms of the actual uh, sound in decibels, I don't have an exact read on that, but I would say it's, it's somewhat equivalent to a 22 when it's fully charged. So if you're talking about stealth hunting for large game, a crossbow or even a compound bow is still gonna be quieter, but it's not gonna be as accurate. This thing is damn near accurate as a rifle out to, I would say, 50, 70 yards. Of course, you have the possibility for reusable ammunition, but because this thing is so high powered, there's a good chance it's going right through anything you shoot. So it might be a challenge for you to actually find the arrow. This thing was going through my crossbow discharge target like it was nothing. So I do think that you're probably going to need a lot of ammo for something like this. The maneuverability is that of a rifle, so you don't have the big clunky crossbow to carry around. A lot of people like the reverse compound crossbows because with those you can get up to speeds of 420 to 450 feet per second, something equivalent to this, with the downside, of course, of the weight. This only weighs about six pounds, so it's relatively lightweight. Now that's not factoring in the quiver, any other accessories, how many arrows you want to carry. In theory, like I said, the arrows are reusable if you can find them. One of the other benefits is unlike a crossbow or a bow, a compound bow in particular, there are less moving parts. So I'm not so much worried about this ever failing me, at least for a long, long time. The problem is a lot of the moving components, a lot of the things that could break are simply offloaded to the devices you use to charge this with. So your air compressor could easily break down. It's a very intricate machine. Your hand pump could break down beyond repair. So for long-term Mad Max, you would have to ensure that you had a way to charge this. Otherwise, it's just a big paperweight. On the same token, if you look at a crossbow or a compound bow, good luck manufacturing a compound crossbow string in the field from scratch. A recurve bow or a recurve crossbow is another story. You could easily engineer a crossbow or bow string, and we'll do a video on that in the future to show you how. But that's one of the first drawbacks. The next drawback is the proprietary arrows. You can only use arrows in this that are made by the Umarex company. It's very important that you understand these two things. If you get a gun like this, you're gonna need the air compressor, which is special. It's gonna be an extra 500 bucks and you're gonna have to have these special arrows that work with this because the arrows that go in here are hollowed out. They're 250 grain for the actual shaft of the arrow and then the field tip point is about 100 grains. Then you have to add on your 100 to 150 grain broadhead. So it's about 350 grains altogether and you cannot engineer those, okay? So once you run out of those special arrows, good luck doing that with this. So. What that means is there's gonna be a, a very high upfront investment for something like this. You're gonna need those special arrows. You're gonna need those special ways to charge it. The other downside is because this is a pressurized tank, that means that the most powerful shots you're gonna get are when the tank is full. And it's progressively going to go downwards in terms of the power that it releases. So that means that if you get 30 shots in a tank, the first 10 shots are gonna be your most powerful. The next 10 shots are gonna be less powerful. The last 10 shots are gonna be really lacking in power. From what I've seen, up to about 20 shots or so, you're still getting about 300 feet per second. So you're still gonna be able to take large game, but that's something to be mindful of, is that may also mess with your accuracy and your sighting in of the rifle. Now, there is a four-way horizontal reticle inside the scope so you are able to gauge distance quite well with this thing it's really accurate once you get it dialed in and there's almost no recoil whatsoever so that's another benefit over a large bore rifle so what you're getting here is a large bore rifle without the kick without the sound it's also lighter weight but it, it feels like a really durable build. Like this feels like a rifle should feel. So I'm not at all worried about the construction quality of something like this. I think the gun in of itself, I'm not at all worried about it breaking down. The only other potential downside is this right here. 
This is the tube that you slide the arrows into. And this is not stationary. So it moves a little bit, it wobbles. Now, don't get me wrong. It's still probably gonna stay straight and you're gonna have to do something really dumb to seriously warp or bend that. But it's just one of those things that over time, you may lose a little bit of accuracy because that thing has to move a little bit. That's really the only way they can do it, at least right now from an engineering perspective, as far as I can tell. The other thing, which is a potential downside, is this valve. If you lose that, you're screwed once again. That's the only way to charge it up. And you only get one of these devices with the gun. So make sure you don't lose it. It stays in there just fine. It's not gonna fall out. So I usually, honestly, just leave it in there, but you're definitely gonna wanna be careful with that. Now, in terms of the price, it's very reasonably priced when you consider that a crossbow with equivalent power and accuracy, you're getting into the $2,000 range. So you're paying about 30% of what you would pay for that for something which is more powerful, more maneuverable, and you can reload it much faster. All I have to do to reload this, take another arrow, stick it on top, pull the bolt back, it's ready to fire. Whereas with a crossbow, uh, some crossbows are gonna require you to have a lot of strength in order to caulk, or they're gonna require a caulking aid. So going back again to the thousand pumps to fill this thing with a manual hand pump, you're doing all that work beforehand instead of having to string it up in the field, having to discharge it like you would a crossbow at the end of the day. A uh, crossbow is much more dangerous also, I should add, just with all those strings and moving parts and the process of caulking it. It's very easy to injure yourself, especially with a compound bow or a compound crossbow if something were to go wrong. This just feels like a much safer platform to me. I know I wasn't using my safety glasses today. I probably should have, but honestly, I wasn't really at all worried about it. Now, there may be some safety issues with respect to using a high PSI air compressor that you use with this. Many of those are gonna have fail safes built into them. So again, not too concerned, but the safety with respect to this comes in the filling. So you get that all that out of the way. So out in the field, you are free to basically just do whatever you want. I can walk around with this thing with my 30 charge shots in there, no problem. So would I recommend something like this? I'd say for the man who has every other firearm, you might as well. When you factor in the price of the air compressor, the price of the ammo, and the gun itself, then you're probably looking at about 1500 bucks, to be brutally honest, to get all the accessories that you would want for something like this. Compared to what I've seen some people spend on firearms, that's peanuts, especially for a specialty item like this. There's definitely a place for this just for its stealth and power capabilities. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about the UMARX Air Saber Bow. What would you rather have? Would you rather have a crossbow? Would you rather have a compound bow? Or would you rather have something like this? I know what you're gonna say. I would rather have my AR or my Tavor, or whatever the case. I know that, guys. I'm just saying, of these novelty items, which one would you prefer? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. The best quality products at the best prices. Use discount code SURVIVALPREPPER, all caps, all one word, for 10% off. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.